Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video where I'm going to be talking about two subjects mainly. The first being Callum Hudson-Odoi on England duty. Will he be taking the place of Raheem Sterling after that situation with Joe Gomez? Raheem Sterling was sent home. Is he going to be playing in place of him? And that's also taking into consideration of Marcus Rashford, who's in form, and Jadon Sancho, who's had sort of niggling injuries. And secondly, I'm going to be talking about Chelsea's centre-back situation. It looks like they've got a very handsome and decent partnership in Tomori and Zuma. But Chelsea have been linked with Kalido Koulibaly, as have Manchester United, and the price of Koulibaly might be coming down a little bit because of what's going on in Napoli. And also, I want to talk about Antonio Rudiger's potential contract extension with the club. He's obviously only played 45 minutes this season, but apparently Frank really does want him to stay for longer. If you catch my drift. Right, quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not done so yet. Just click subscribe. More importantly, click the little bell notifications icon so you can keep up with the content. And why not like the video to help me out? Right then, Callum Hudson Adoy, Boy Wonder, the Academy Jewel in the Crown, and all that. Now fit again and playing for Chelsea, he's been called up to Gareth Southgate's England squad yet again. Southgate rates the chosen one. I can't do it. Southgate rates Callum very, very highly, and it's no surprise that he's in the England squad now he's fit. I'm sure all of you are well aware of what's happened between Raheem Sterling and Joe Gomez after the game at Anfield, and apparently they had a bit of a bust up at England camp. Some even say that Raheem Sterling like hit Gomez and caused a scratch on his face. Regardless, something happened. It was relatively unsavoury by all accounts, and Southgate sent Raheem Sterling home. He's actually seen called a press conference about it and tried to talk about it without talking about it if you know what I mean you know what managers are like so it's been a huge controversial talking point and Callum hudson Adoy was speaking on it recently he was giving um, Sterling a glowing reference saying he's his idol he's like a, such a good role model which I probably agree with all of that Raheem Sterling I think he is good to the younger players and obviously he's been an important icon in fighting racism and standing up for young black players which is all superb like every other human being he lost his temper in a situation and obviously there was a controversial situation. But it's nice to hear Callum hudson Adoy say such positive things about someone he looks up to. So, Raheem Sterling's absence. Who was starting next to Harry Kane? It was Harry Kane and it was Sterling and Sancho as a front three, right? Well, now you remove Raheem Sterling from that front three, who'd you put in? I guess you put in Marcus Rashford. He's been playing kind of well on the left, right? It really depends how Southgate wants to play these two upcoming England games. If he wants someone to run in behind, Rashford's your boy. Remember, he's been very, very effective playing with someone like Martial, who isn't like Harry Kane, and very good on the counter-attack. But I don't think Southgate's going to want to play on the counter-attack. Regardless to all those things that do make sense, I still see him maybe starting Rashford over Callum Hudson-Odoi. But Callum Hudson-Odoi can play on both left and right flanks, so would he consider him on the right flank over Jadon Sancho? Now, I'm not saying that on general form or ability, Jadon Sancho is superb, but he came off recently in the game in De Classico against Bayern Munich quite early. He's had a sort of niggling little injury that's been going on and he hasn't been playing very well. Does Southgate take that into consideration? Look at a Callum hudson Adoy who's fresh as anything. He's got no issues, he's raring to go, he's got a feel-good factor about him. And start him on the right? All things considered, with the absence of Raheem Sterling, Rashford being in good form, but perhaps not necessarily suiting the playstyle that Southgate would want to apply in these games, and obviously the poor form and injury of Jadon Sancho, all those things together, that might be a real positive chance for Callum hudson Adoy to get some serious playtime for England this international break. I mean, obviously he's really good mates with Sancho, so just to see them play on each flank again for England would be really nice, passing the ball to each other, combining like they used to at youth level, that would be super nice. But, you know, take nothing away from Marcus Rashford, he's been good for Manchester United of late, it's just playing in a certain style. Although he did miss that absolute sitter. But then again, he scored that worldly free kick against Chelsea. Anyway, you take the point. It's up to Southgate and how he wants to play. And you know what? If he wants to play on form, he might be picking Tammy Abraham over Harry Kane. That's a conversation for another time. We'll see, but it will be very, very interesting to see who gets minutes. I think over this international break, Tamori, Abraham and Hudson-Azoi will all get, hopefully, 
decent minutes, you know, at least a half each to the name throughout this international break. Anyway, we'll have to see. I'll provide more updates on Chelsea players playing throughout the international break on different videos. Right, let's talk about central defenders. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Chelsea looked like they're getting better and better with the partnership of Kurt Zuma and Fakayo Tomori. They're both playing well. If Tomori's not scoring like a 50-yard rocket, Zuma's dribbling 70 yards up the pitch, turning into Messi, apart from the finish. And their general chemistry is really, really good in how they're playing in the team. But that's just two centre-backs. Chelsea play loads of games. They need four good centre-backs. Obviously, David Luiz going was a bit of a blow, maybe not so much in hindsight, but they might look to replace him and Christensen hasn't really been playing for Chelsea. So is Frank Lampard looking to replace Andreas Christensen? Maybe. Chelsea have been linked with Kalido Koulibaly yet again, someone that Chelsea, all big Premier League clubs, have been linked with before. Now, generally, if you'd asked me, he would have cost way too much money and would be a poor investment. This Chelsea side's ethos is generally being young with a little bit of experience. He could come into that a little bit of experience bracket because obviously he's pushing 30, about to touch 30, and he would be absolutely a world record transfer fee of like 100 million because he was like, you know, people were saying, oh, well, it's Virgil van Dijk and Koulibaly, best two centre-backs in the world. But things may have changed recently with the fallout that's happening at Napoli at the moment. I don't know if any of you followed it. I suggest you go and research it. But basically, there's like a fallout between the fans, Ancelotti, De Laurentiis. They tried to do something called detention where they hold all the players down after a poor result. But none of them did that. They all went home and they went against the uh, the owner, De Laurentiis. But then Ancelotti sided with the players, but then didn't side, but then didn't know what to do. And the players don't feel like they can go against Ancelotti because of half his staff or his sons or stepsons. And it's all a bit weird. Basically, a lot of the fans are angry at a lot of Napoli players, as is De Laurentiis. And I think they want to sell loads of their stars. He talked about flogging loads in January in a moment of like aggression and frustration. Now, I do think a lot of this is blown out of proportion but regardless to all what's happening if they do want to switch over the old guard I think Koulibaly's price is suddenly not as high as it could have been especially with Napoli underperforming as a whole now that's nothing to do necessarily with the individual's ability but just generally the stink that's going on over in Naples so what if like Koulibaly's suddenly 30 million pounds cheaper did Chelsea go in for him? Should they go in for him? Does Frank want that? I mean, generally, if you look at Chelsea, the biggest critique you can make would be, oh, they need to sort themselves out defensively, right? And maybe on set pieces. Sure, you put Kalido Koulibaly in there, he's going to be much better at defending set pieces and generally make the team better defensively. But of course, he'll be a starting player. And what do you do? Do you break up that budding partnership between Zuma and Tomori? Oh, I don't know. It will be an interesting one. It certainly would be a massive high profile transfer. And Manchester United would hate that. Anyway, speaking of centre backs and not wanting to sort of rock the boat as it is, apparently Frank Lampard wants to give Antonio Rudiger a contract extension. He's probably due one in terms of his age and general ability and how long he's got left on his contract. Maybe, but he's only played 45 minutes in the Premier League this season. You ask any sort of footballing pundit of late, they'd be saying, well, Chelsea aren't doing well, but, you know, N'Golo Kante's not on the team who's their most, you know, their world-class player, and Antonio Rudiger's not on the team who's their best defender. The things kind of worked out differently. It did look like it's going to be hard to put Kante back in the team in terms of ruining current chemistry, you know, Kovacic, Jorginho, and the centre-back partnership, although naive at a lot of time between... Zuma and Tomori, you know, do you put Rudiger just put him straight back in and who do you take out? Because Zuma's been excellent. His defensive stats the last few games have been excellent, but Tomori's meant to be the one the kid centre back. So what do you do? Maybe it's a good problem to have. Maybe Rudiger still is Chelsea's best centre back and maybe they buy Koulibaly and sell Christensen and then have four centre backs of Koulibaly, Rudiger, Tomori and Zuma. I mean, they are four top top level centre backs that you could ro rotate in for different competitions and all basically be trying to displace the other but I feel like continuity is a really important thing in partnerships and you know that's certainly what happened with Tammy Abraham when he wasn't great at the beginning Frank Lampard says I'm going to stick with you and look how that's turning out so maybe he should just stick with these two at the back where they are now in Zuma and Tomori and not try and mess up too many things by buying in a huge profile player um, and maybe just sign Rudiger up and rotate him? It's a difficult one, as generally is the whole January transfer window ban lifting situation is. Who'd you buy? Because if they said to Frank Lampard, look man, we've got loads of money, you can 
you know, we've got all this sitting in the bank that we've not been able to touch for a while. You're doing really well. The fans love it, the media love it. If you want, we can nurture this product a little bit with more money. As a coach, you gotta be a little bit tempted by that. But what do you do? Like, wh where do you replace a player? And, you know, again, something that I've said before, maybe just get rid of Alonso, bring Chilwell in, and maybe a right winger, but... That's, but Willian's playing very, very well. It's more of a looking forward type of thing. Do you know what I mean? It's a difficult situation. Anyway, I'm always interested in hearing what you guys have to say about the situation. So get down into the comment section below and let me know your thoughts of do Chelsea buy a centre-back? Would you go for Kalido Koulibaly if he was cheaper due to the Napoli situation? Do you see hudson Adoy getting decent minutes under Southgate in this international break? I want to hear it. Get down in the comments and let me know. Remember, if you have enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like the video. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Subscribe to my sister channel, which I play video games on, and it's a lot of fun. Yan plays. Go YouTube it now, Jan plays. And if you want, you can join the Discord server and talk about football in Chelsea with me and other members of the GOAT gang over this not overly exciting international break. That's it from me, everyone. I hope you've all enjoyed the video and enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby